Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is Apple's battle with the U.S. government. By far, the biggest security story this week is probably Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple's, public letter to his customers describing why Apple plans to fight the U.S. order to weaken the iPhone's security. To understand this, let me give you a little historical recap. You probably remember the very tragic San Bernardino terrorist shooting where two religious extremists went to an event and shot and killed 14 people and injured 26 others. Now the authorities tracked them down and actually killed these terrorists in a shootout. However, during the investigation, the FBI and other authorities uncovered an iPhone belonging to one of these terrorists. Now if you know anything about iOS devices, they actually have strong data security. Before you actually enter the phone's passcode or security code, the data is actually strongly encrypted and it's not only locked from other people and criminals, but it's locked from Apple themselves. Themselves. As you might expect, authorities would love to have access to the data on a terrorist phone to help further their investigation. So of course they're going to try to recruit the help of vendors like Apple to try to get access to the data. And if you read Tim Cook's letter, Apple does want to help the authorities when they have the means to do so. If there's subpoenas and things where they can share data that might help an investigation when it's obvious there's a criminal, like in this case a terrorist, they're more than willing to help. The rub here, however, is Apple's designed a very good security system. They've designed a system where, by intention, even Apple doesn't have access to their users' data. They want your data to be private, and this actually is good security. So what the government's done is asked Apple to create a special version of iOS firmware that purposely bypasses some of these security features that they baked in on purpose. For instance, there's a feature on iOS devices that will wipe the device if you enter the passcode wrong over 10 times. There's also a feature with the passcode that throttles attempts. If you enter the passcode wrong, say four times, it might make you wait before you can enter it again. And all of these features, of course, are designed to prevent brute force attacks, where if a criminal steals your phone, he could create a rig that tries thousands of passcodes an hour and eventually get your particular passcode out of a very limited subset. So really, the government is trying to make it easier for them to brute force this terrorist phone. By the way, in order to compel Apple to do this, the U.S. government is leveraging an old act called the All Writs Act. Now, I'm no legal expert, but by my understanding, this act is kind of a catch-all act that was designed to allow courts to legally order organizations to do something when there really is no law in place around the particular issue. And there's actually four rules to using this act. First of all, there can't already be some sort of law or, or statute that's covering the particular issue. Second, the organization organization you're trying to compel to do something has to be involved somehow in the investigation. Third, there has to be some sort of extreme circumstance that allows the court to order this organization to do something. And finally, the order can't put any sort of undue burden on the organization itself. So this is what the U.S. government is using to try to get Apple to, to create this special iOS firmware. So what's the problem here? I think any reasonable human being wants to help the authorities, especially in a clear case like this where there's a known terrorist and they're just trying to do this investigation to protect from other sorts of attacks. And in fact, in Apple's letter, Tim Cook actually mentions that they want to help the FBI, that they do provide data whenever they can. But in this case, they've purposely designed a system to protect us, the consumers. Apple themselves have designed a system where they cannot access our data without that particular passcode. What the FBI is asking is for Apple to create a weak weakened version of their product that will help the FBI crack the iPhone. Now, of course, the U.S. government's going to argue that it only intends to use this weakened firmware for good, maybe only in just this one case. But Apple's argument, and one I agree with, is once you release a weakened firmware into the world, you have no control over how it's used. Even if the intentions are good, if this falls into the wrong hands, you're weakening everyone's security. By the way, this is becoming a repeated topic of concern between governments and security vendors. In this case, it's them trying to brute force a passcode. Other times, it's them trying to gain access to a master key for public encryption. Personally, I side with Apple. Whether it's putting backdoors in public encryption or trying to make it easier to brute force passcodes, purposely weakening consumer security will do more harm in the long run than any sort of investigation help it provides in the short term. Furthermore, there's 
there's little evidence that shows whether or not having backdoors would even help governments catch more criminals or stop terrorists. In fact, there's some evidence that suggests otherwise. Bruce Snyder is a popular cryptographer that took part in two recent encryption-related studies. The first looked at if governments had backdoors in domestic encryption products, would that really help? And what they found was there's hundreds of other non-domestic encryption products terrorists could turn to to still protect their communication. On top of that, they also looked into the syndrome of criminals' communications going dark. And by that, I mean them being so encrypted that investigators can't actually use them for clues. And what they found is plenty of communication still happens in clear text. There's plenty of metadata and other clear text communications that can still help authorities and investigators track down this kind of digital crime. So really, it shouldn't be necessary for governments to break consumer encryption and consumer security just to catch criminals. There's plenty of other investigation options that are still open, and doing so just weakens the entire state of the internet. And in any case, it's a very interesting security conundrum and kind of a gray area. I agree with Tim Cook's conclusions, and I think he lays out the argument quite well. I really recommend you read his letter. Now, the good news is whether or not you agree with me or Tim Cook, what's really important here is that the entire community, citizens of the world, have a transparent and public discussion about this. We're going to see more and more situations where governments are going to try to push the envelope as far as computer defense and computer security. Besides trying to get their hooks into encryption, they're also considering offensive cyber attacks on other countries and all kinds of things that will affect the world at large. Unfortunately, these gray issues don't always have clear-cut answers. On one hand, I think most people want authorities and governments to have the tools necessary to catch criminals and terrorists and to keep their citizens safe. On the other hand, I think most democracies agree that their citizens have the right to secure their privacy. You know, the means don't always justify the ends. If the means might result in a loss of our privacy, a loss of our freedom, or a loss of our security, and they don't prove any additional safety, we really need to question whether or not it's the right decision. So really, the practical takeaway is whether or not you agree with Apple and me, or you have your own opinions, this should be a public, transparent discussion. Before governments go and make these choices on their own, citizenship around the world has to to make their voice heard. So take part in this conversation. Anyways, that's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.